care back on this motor here today. So I'm going to work on these cases a little bit. They're just supposed to be all spotlessly clean and everything, so I'm going to clean them again. So we're going to be putting a new bearing in here. These studs were a little bit short when you had the motor mount in here. So you don't have about that many threads sticking up. You can see how this one's a lot lower than this one. So I need to pull these up. I need to see how high this, high, high this one is and go up high and open, move this out about a hundred thou and make all these taller. So I might have to re-put these in. It looks like they ran them all the way until they bottomed out the thread, which is not how you're supposed to do it. There's a lot of burrs on everything right here and high spots everywhere need to be worked on. Got bearings in here. This one's missing all the rollers. We're gonna put new ones in anyway. We'll reuse the main bearing unless I see something wrong with it. And we're gonna put a new bearing over here and then clean this up, make sure that's good. And we just put the bearings in that. So I gotta, gotta knock these out. They go out the other way. There should be a lip that keeps them coming out this way so they don't stick out too far. These ones look like they've been uh, beat out too far the wrong way. So. Anyway, they're not supposed to come out this way, they go the other way. So let's see what we got here. So I just got my cheap ass metric sockets I beat with my steel hammer to knock these out. I don't really care a lot about these. Give them one good wrap and a couple lights. Yeah. So now these are all out. <clears throat> when you blast the cases, the inside of these keep catch a lot of dirt, beads, sand, whatever you're using. It takes a lot of work to clean that stuff out, so. Just throw them away, looks good. Yeah, the lip's pretty well gone on the inside of the case. So, there's nothing to keep the bearing from going too far this way now. So, either the machine or pressed in or something. So, we'll be putting sleeve retainer locked on those to make sure they don't go out too far that way. This one doesn't matter which way you go, as long as it comes out. So that's getting to be replaced. All right. I'll work on the studs later. Here we got the bearing race over here is going to come out. Do that with a punch. You just hit this on the inside of the cup and go back and forth and knock it out. Let's grab a hold of. If my punch is pretty rounded off from doing that a few times already, doesn't help. Should go back and grind it. We'll see. Get a bite on it now. Nice and gritty on my table now. Stop coming off. Nice and 
Nice stinky oil in there. Nice burnt on oil in there. It smells sweet. All right. I'm going to throw them in the trash too. Tester don't need those back. Okay, I'm going to take them back, clean these up real good. I'm going to blow every hole out with a long nozzle. And then I got to run through a clean tank and clean one more time. So I get two more cleanings before you see me. So, time to go work. Alright, we're getting back onto the Sportster motor here. So I got the cases all cleaned up pretty good. I blew out all the holes and I cleaned them off, get all the residue off so they're nice and clean now. I filed all these surfaces off the other day because there's a lot of high spots and burrs and junk in the way. So I knocked down all the stuff so things should sit together flat now. We're going to keep this bearing here, but we're putting new bearings and everything else. So the transmission bearings. These are can bearings over here. Yeah. Those. So I can put all the cams in here. Oh, those are going to lock tight in. Yep. Gotta keep them falling all the way through the case because somebody pushed them through the wrong way. And I got the new Timpkin bearing wherever it ran off to. There it is. That's fine. So we got the new Timpkin bearing in over here for the main shaft. And then we're going to have to deal with some other stuff here. These studs are in too deep, so I'm going to have to reposition these and do some fine tuning on that kind of stuff. I gotta check the fit on the bearing race here with the old rollers right here and the new shaft over here and see if they match. So a lot of little a lot of knickknack stuff here. All the pre-fitting you gotta do before you can put more together. And then I gotta deal with the cam cover after that. So we'll get this stuff handled first. So the first thing you gotta do is get all the parts out. Because you want to use them. Good. All right, so there's all that junk. So these two are ready to be pushed in. Trap door is over here. So this one here has to be pushed out. So I have to get something to do that. That one feels okay. Uh, what else was I working on? Needle bearings. Every supplier has their own box and packaging. Eventually you get to the part you want. There we go. That's the piece I wanted. So this package here is from Sonics. Right back there. I got it from Mid USA. It's made by Koyo, which was Timken, which was Torrington. Life in the big world these days. Everybody bought everybody else. Of course, every time they bought themselves out, the quality kind of goes out the window. It's easy how it works, anyway. And eventually, you get down to the actual part you want. Yep. It used to be it just came in a package, and that's it. Other packaging going with it. All right, so there's some bearings. Get rid of this one now.
torrent that still has torrent written on it. Oh, not torrent, excuse me, Timken. Get that right. So all we want out of these is the races, which is this part. And that's the parts we need right there. Two of those. The center ring we reuse because they're all the same. No reason to take it out. And the inner one that actually adjusts the inflay, don't lose it. You'll need that. And don't forget to put it back in. Alright, what else are we pushing out right now? I think that's it. Jeez, we got all kinds of crap to do. Okay. with one hand. All right, so we gotta go over here to the press. Figure out what we're gonna do. I got the pressing piece to knock this bearing out. We got everything else laying over here to do this one. Okay, this is the installation and removal tool. I made this one myself. One tool does everything. So these are the bearing races that are going to go in there. So my tool goes right in there and holds it, nice and flat, it doesn't bond, we're not hitting on a taper, we're hitting on the flat shoulder here, and we can push that straight through, no problem. Now if you want to remove it, you can push it the other way, this pushes right through the snap ring that's still in here, down there, so you push it through. So the two tool does one job. If we want to. Actually, that's not true. It doesn't take it out. I forget what I'm doing. This side does it earlier. This is due to late. I gotta figure it out. Because I beat it out with a hammer. I remember. Long night of working on a Ford truck. Alright, so. There's the valve pin at. Okay, very important that you support the case over here. So you want to make sure you're supported underneath here on both sides of the blocks. So the case is well supported so you don't break the case. I don't push off the middle, I push on the outside edges. Late cases, you've got to support the middle. Early stuff is strong enough you don't have to. So I never made the tools to do it the other way. Put it on the floor. <coughs> yeah. Usually I like to push the inner one in last. I'm gonna turn this direction. Make sure we're well supported again. Center as you go. When it hits the snap ring in there, quit moving. So you push it all the way down until you hit the snap ring that was still in there. So the snap ring is right there now. Good to go. Now we flip it over like we had the first time. And push the other half in. Alright, 
Turn the bearings all the way in. Just like it's supposed to be. Now the reason I push it in this direction for at last is because I want it to go all the way that way it can go. So we have more room on the cam side when flywheels are turning. Because usually you have less room on the right side than this side. There's a lot of clearance in here for things to hit. So that's why I do it that way. The difference is probably like two thou. Could be as much as five, but more like two. That's okay. I like taking up everything I can get. Okay, let's do the trap door now. Of course, lined up here. So we got to push this out. So I'm just going to flip it over, come off the flat surfaces right here to your door, because this side is not machined, so it's not flat anywhere. You can make it. Push it down. Bearing with no bearings in it. Trash. Okay, let me pull it out. See the hole in there? Go ahead and wipe it out. There's oil there's oil always oil residue. Okay, so it's all relatively clean in there now. Okay, now we're gonna push it in. So I'm going to put it on top of this surface here. I'm going to push it in the side until it's flush. So make sure that's going to be the part that sticks up the most. Okay. I'm going to make sure it's clearance. bearing. So you always push on the flat side, not the round side. Round side is not made to be pushed on. Flat side is made to be pushed on. It's stronger. So that's how you put it in. Okay, just go until it's flush. Make sure the rollers rotate. So you put your fingernail and just rotate them. If they won't rotate, they're jammed up, you gotta redo it. What happens is when the roller gets a little bit of an angle to it like that, and when you're pushing it, it squeezes it and locks it up solid. So you have to pull them back out, make sure the rollers are straight, and then push it straight in. I looked at it before I put it in, it looked straight, that's why I didn't screw with it. You don't know what exactly I'm talking about. You're looking at how the rollers, the angle the rollers are at. See when they tilt side to side, they'll get tight when you push them in. Okay, so here's our new cam bearings. We gotta lock tight these in, so I gotta wipe off the grease that's on the outside edge. Lock tight don't stick too good to grease oils, petroleum products in general, kind of likes being dry. If you want you can break clean them or whatever you want to get them really clean but wipe them off easy enough. You wipe your fingers off too so you don't re grease them up.
Okay, there's the four cam bearings. And we also have the transmission bearing to put into. Okay. In the way. Transmission bearing goes in just like the other one. Do it uh, pushing in what's flush on this side. Obviously, we can't put it on top of this surface because it's low. See how it's lower than all this other stuff. So you actually have to put something on there to push it against. the surface at all. See that's not even machined. So I can't flip it over at all. I'm gonna have to push it all the way through and go deeper. Wonderful. I don't like over pushing stuff usually. Alright. Well. Kind of dictate what we have to do around here. So the cup side goes on the inside, the solid side is on the out. So you can see how it's sticking in a little bit more than flush. So as you go a little bit deeper. So I don't think this is small enough to push it down any deeper. No, well, it's the right size. I lucked out. Sometimes these cases are a lot thicker. This one's just barely thicker. So I'm only going about 30 thou max deeper. So now it's just below the surface in here now. That's why I want to make it sure. It's a little bit below the surface, but not quite. So this side here, you can see it's recessed in slightly on this side now. Now when you put these together, you got to make sure the counter shaft does not bottom out inside of the, the cup here, though. That could be a problem. Okay, now we're going to put all these cam bearings in here. A closer. It's hard to see, obviously. Alright, as close as we're going to get to seeing anything. Okay, I'm going to take my sleeve retainer, a little bit on my finger, and we'll lubricate the case with it. The reason I got to do this is because somebody pushed the bearings out the wrong way. Usually there's a lip in there that keeps from going all the way through. The lip's not there anymore. So this is just a safety type thing. The bearings themselves should not have any kind of a side load on them, but that doesn't mean there isn't. Just because it shouldn't be doesn't mean it doesn't. So this is just kind of a secondary backup thing. All right, all lubricated there. I'll just take the bearing and do the same thing with each one of these a little bit. Remember to stay off the damn rollers though. Very important that you're not on the rollers themselves. So I pick them up on the center. Try not to transfer too much of the Loctite where it doesn't need to be. 
could be a problem. Okay, so these we just push in until they're flush. Once again, flat side is out. I'm use this big flat one here. I'll use this side here. And we need something to be a little bit above the surface here. Let's get this stuff out of the way. We'll use this big one. Get centered up a little bit. Go to the center of it and it goes straight down. Make sure the roller moves after you're in there all the way. Loctite was already biting pretty hard there. A lot more than I expected it to be. Sleeve retainer, you can't screw around, you gotta get it going. You have seconds, more like one or two. After that, it's biting pretty hard, which means it doesn't want to move. So the pressure goes way up, and that's when you can start breaking cases. feel if they're sticking up a little bit. Okay, the last one. So you pick it up so you don't grab the important part. Pressure wise, we're only putting a couple tons of pressure on this, two, two and a half tons. Okay, those all feel pretty good. See how they're all flush in there? I don't think I really see it, but they're pretty flush. Alright, so we got all new bearings in here, and we got a new bearing back there. So now we need to check this to see the fit on this one. And what else do we need to do? That's about it for this for now. Okay, let me get all this cleaned up. We'll be back.